Hello everyone and welcome back to Mass Appeal with Kansas City T-Bones manager John Massarelli. Mass Appeal is a weekly program that gives you, the fans, the opportunity to ask the Kansas City manager questions about the T-Bones, baseball or sports in general, or just seek John's wisdom about life events that are going on. In this week's episode, John talks to us about his beliefs related to momentum. He shares with us his insights on why he doesn't think managers should be fined when they get ejected from games. And John pulls out the couch to answer a couple of relationship questions for us. So let's get right to Mass Appeal. Well, let us welcome back manager John Massarelli. John, let's first of all begin with team updates you have for us. Well, we signed uh, it's called Tanner Neal from Southwest Minnesota State. Mm -hmm. Interesting story is uh, I saw him play with Malone against Malone in the University two years ago in Tucson and always had him on my list as a guy just in case because he's somewhat close to KC and then when you run through, he was our sixth starting catcher this year last week. Wow. That's how many we've run through. When you when you need a catcher, Tyler Moore broke his wrist last week. And when you need a catcher the last 10 days of August, they're not really hanging off the catcher tree. So I had Tanner Neal's number and gave him a call, and he drove down and joined us. So we're lucky to have him. Excellent. Well, let us head to our fan questions for this week. We first of all start with James from Kansas City. He says, are you a believer in momentum in baseball? He's heard a lot of managers and players say they don't think so. Oh, uh, I'm a big believer in momentum. Uh, you know, when, when players, when teams get on swings of, and rolls, uh, it works both ways. Whether it's losing, they learn how to lose, or they learn how to win. Uh, and just things happen and breaks go, it's, I don't think it's a coincidence how streaks get going, but nobody knows how to start and stop them. That's the problem. <laughs> it is, I, I, I know there's got like no magic formula that you can come up with, but I, I hear some managers talk about they don't like to use words like slumps and things like that. Do you find that those are things that are kind of buzzwords you don't mention around when the team's struggling? Well, no, you, don't, you don't want to create any negative vibe. You, you always want to try to stay positive with your guys and, you know, when things are going well, you just keep staying positive. And when things are going bad, you try to stay positive with them so they can overcome it quickly. Uh, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There's no really magic formula on it. David from Kansas City would like to know. He says, David, uh, excuse me, Dalton Wheat sure looks like a real find for you. Are you surprised he has not been signed by an affiliate team? Uh, not as surprised as surprised they didn't get drafted yes very surprised somebody missed on him uh here's a guy that runs above average throws above average fields above average uh the only question is his bat's got to develop uh, a little short on power uh but i'm assuming that's what how he got overlooked but i could see him getting signed this off season and getting an opportunity so good young find for us Andre from Bethel would like to know, he says, do you think the struggles of guys like Anthony Gallus and Vladimir Frias really hurt their chances, or do you think they will rebound next year? Well, Anthony Gallus, first off, has played at about 70% all year. Uh, still coming back from that labrum tear, has not been able to play the field, uh, and it affects him at the plate. Uh, and you see what kind of numbers, I mean, you say struggle, but here's a guy that's led us in home runs and second in RBIs for a guy that's playing at 70%. Uh, he's the type of guy, if he comes back healthy and strong, could win the MVP very easily next year This and be gone. Uh, you know, Vladdy, Vladdy struggled a little bit, uh, especially early, and uh, rebounded in the last month and played a little bit more uh, Vladimir Free at shortstop and, and at the plate. So uh, hopefully both of those guys do rebound. Mike from Kansas City had a comment that he wanted me to include in the show. He says, Skipper, I just want to say that I think you have done a great job with this team this year. I was listening to a few people sitting next to me a couple of nights ago talk about how you should be fired. The team has undergone a lot of injuries, but you have had them in the pennant race all season long. Me and my family are proud that you are our favorite team's manager. Well, I appreciate the support from Mike. Uh, that's the nature of uh, this job and this seat is... When the team's not playing well, uh, that's who I'm the guy you have to go to that we're not playing well. So I'll take responsibility for that, and I uh, uh, appreciate his support. It's much easier to be a fan and criticize than it is to be sitting in the seat you're in, I'm sure. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's just part of the 
managers are here to be fired. We all get fired. <laughs> Richard from Des Moines would like to know, what do you think needs to happen to improve next season's team so you are right back in the race again? Well, the biggest thing is health, and it's not, you know, I don't know how much you can control that. Like I mentioned, that, you know, we went through uh, the six catchers and four third basemen, and, you know, you know that's tough to rebound from. Uh, you know, Sean Fernie just injured himself uh, going out of the rotation. So our health gets back. Uh, I like the nucleus of this club. I like where we're at with the starting pitching. Uh, I'd like to see it from day one. And, uh, you know, with the additions of, you know, Ryan Retz, we also added him, a rookie that uh, looks good. will be a rookie next season along with Wheat. Uh, uh, I like where this team's at. Karen from Kansas City has an interesting question. She mm -hmm. says, I don't understand why managers and players get fined for being ejected. You didn't ask to be ejected, so why do you get fined? I like that. <laughs> I'm going to use that next time uh, Lance uh, fines me for being ejected. I would say it's not my fault for being ejected. Well, I'm sure they do it to discourage us from being ejected. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Leo would like to know, who do you think will win the American Association title this year? Oh, that's interesting. I tell you what, in a in a short series, Lincoln could be very tough with their pitching. Uh, and that's what it comes out. So could St. Paul, but uh, I think it comes down to that pitching. But this goes back to, uh, heck, that uh, first question on, on momentum. Whoever gets that momentum going, uh, you know, like Laredo did last year, late in the season. So I think whoever gets the momentum going uh, and has that Cinderella slipper on at the end is going to win it. Do, do you feel that's benefiting a team like Gary right now that seems to be really warming up? Yeah, I mean, they could sleep in. They could be tough to beat in a short series just because they play good defense and have good starting pitching. Switching to our Major League Baseball questions, Bill from Kansas City would like to know who you think will win the World Series at this point. You know, same goes to the last question and the momentum question on the first one. Uh, two years ago, how could you have predicted the Royals uh, were going to do it when they when they when the playoffs started? They're they're down in the uh, one game playoff to the A's, come back and find a way to win it, and then go all the way to the World Series. And then last year, the Astros have beaten uh, the Royals almost eliminating them in the elimination game, and then the Royals come back and win it all. So it goes back to the momentum. Uh, whoever gets that mo that mojo going in the playoffs, uh, again, you go back to the starting pitching, who's tough to beat. Cleveland will be awfully tough to beat in a short series, you would think, with the pitching that can line up. Shelly from Kansas City asked a question which everybody seems to be talking about. <laughs> what do you think are the chances that Tim Tebow could make it in professional baseball? Less than uh, 1% chance. It's tough It's tough enough for the number one picks this year that have been playing and training their whole lives for it, uh, let, alone, let alone a guy that's 29 years old that thinks he can come in and do it. So I would say less than 1%. Sat out for the last 11 years, too. That's a long span to not be playing. Yeah. Uh, Dan? Not a, not a physical sport. This is a skill sport. Dan would like to know, are you glad to see that Alex Rodriguez retired, and do you think he'll be back? Yes, and I hope not. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> you know, I'm interested from your standpoint being a, a former hitter there. If you were sitting four home runs away from 700, could you have just walked away from that? Yeah, there's definitely more to that story than we're being told between the Yankees and A-Rod. Uh, and I'm sure at some point it's going to eventually come out. Nobody can keep that kind of a secret. Something, something's going on there. Hmm, that's interesting. The payoff of the contract or something happened. But we won't know about it for a while. Trevor from Springfield would like to know. He says, I know that no hitters are a big deal, but would you have left Matt Moore in after he had thrown 119 pitches, especially considering he had just had his elbow repaired? I'm trying to think who Matt Moore is. Am I not following a MLB enough? A giant starting pitcher? Okay, 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 okay. I need to recognize the name then. 119 pitches isn't a ton. I mean, you get up to 150. I mean, most of those guys, when they're coming back from elbow, 
it's the you know the, it's the next start where you might want to you know he's going to be sore coming back and you might want to back him off. So if he threw 135, 140, maybe that next start you hold him back to 80. Uh, usually when they're out there and they're hot and, and they're loose, uh, as long as you're under 130 pitches or so, 135, then it's not really taxing too much. These guys are big and strong. Uh, but again, it's the wear and tear from the next start or even two starts down the road that can hurt his elbow again. So I learn new information from John Massarelli all the time. Uh, Brian from Cleveland would like to know, I know it has been a tough season for the T-Bones, but the Cavaliers won it all, the Indians look good, and the Browns look on the upswing. This is Cleveland's year, wouldn't you say? It was a tough season for the T-Bones. The Cavaliers did win it all. The Indians do look good, and the Browns look kind of on an upswing. So, yes, I think this is Cleveland's year. <laughs> Sean from Lawrence asks, he says, are you a college football fan, Mass, and what do you think are Ohio State's chances this season? Um, I am a big college football fan. I like following the, the coaches as much as the programs, and so I'm a big, turned into a big Urban Meyer fan. I was not I was a big Jim Trestle fan, so I was a little tough to warm up to Urban, but uh, I like how he leads his men, and uh, boy, he is reloaded. I think there's gonna. I think they're gonna be real good. I think they're. Everyone knows they're good. They just don't know the names and the jerseys right now. Trent from Augusta would like to know. He's a skipper. Are you a fantasy football guy? And if so, care to share your strategy with us? I am not. But he he needs to talk to Dave Shaw, my third base coach. Who is the team does one every year, and he's won it two of the two two years in a row, I believe. He's won the fantasy football. So he's a guy to talk to. Okay, we'll have to seek in some advice out there, Trent. Uh, a person who did not identify himself would like to know who your favorite figure skater is. I think Will Ferrell. <laughs> My favorite figure skater. Easy. That's a good choice. <laughs> John from North Can uh, Kansas City, excuse me, says, School just started for my son, and he is being bullied by a couple of kids. This is our first child heading to school, and if, I am curious if you think it is beneficial for my wife and I to step in, or do we just need to see how things go? Any advice? Wow. I feel like Dr. Phil right now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was, I was old school. I was bullied all the way through school, and I, I was probably a bully to some kids, too. <laughs> It's a little different era now. Um, I, I'm a big believer in kids solving their own problems. I mean, parents staying out of it. As long as nobody's, uh, you know, we're not talking about the same age kids here. Absolutely. So, I think that's how they solve their own problems is when they're dealing. It's the same. We get bullied every day as adults. <laughs> we got to solve our own problems. That is part of growing up for sure. Owen from Liberty would like to know, he says, my son is a pitcher in baseball and the coach at his high school would like him to play quarterback this season. Isn't that just too dangerous of a risk for his shoulder if he wants to pursue baseball beyond high school? Actually, Owen, a uh, big school of thought out there that throwing a football uh, is beneficial for your shoulder for baseball. Uh, if you go out early at uh, most minor league parks, you'll see the pitchers playing catch with a football. I don't know why. I know it's a Tom House thing. You can Google it and look up the why. I just know it's been in baseball for about 20, 25 years at least. Hmm. I think Nolan Ryan started it with uh, Tom House. Oh, really? Wow. Our last question for this week comes from Gina from Kansas City. She says, my husband forgot our first anniversary. Our first anniversary. What would your wife do if you forgot your anniversary? She's looking for <laughs> suggestions. Wow, Gina. We're, we're going 27 years this year, but I'm the reminder in the relationship. Oh, really? Now, my wife, no, I don't think my wife would forget, but I think she would slip her mind as we're approaching, but I'm a constant reminder of when it's coming up. So I think if you constantly, hey, next month, what do you want to do, or it's coming up, or you be the planner of the event, I think you won't forget. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us this week, John. We want to thank Manager John Massarelli for joining us on Mass Appeal this week. If you have your own questions you'd like to ask the Kansas City T-Bone Skipper, 
please send them to us at askjohn at minorleaguesportsupport.com. That's askjohn at minorleaguesportsupport.com. Please have your questions to us by Thursday evening so we can give the skipper a little time to review them before we record the show. I want to thank you for joining us this week. I'm Rob Paneer, the managing editor of the Minor League Sports Report, and we'll see you next time on Mass Appeal.